Hmm, this or that. Are you a vertical or a horizontal type of person? Do you like to distribute and rewrite the problem as addition or do you like to keep subtraction? Those are some of the questions that I want to answer as we look at subtracting these two functions, f of x and g of x. So let's kind of get through the first, the most basic way um, that we can do this is just to rewrite this as a subtraction problem. So if I have f of x minus g of x, and these are my two functions, then I can just rewrite this, what we call the horizontal method. So I'm just gonna lay out 2x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x plus seven, and then I'm just gonna subtract that from g of x. Now again, g of x has three terms. So you just don't wanna write seven x cubed, you wanna use parentheses to group all of g of x together. Okay, now there's a couple of different ways we could go about this now. This is the horizontal method. We could just do this as subtraction or we could also go ahead and rewrite this as an addition problem. So to rewrite it as an addition problem, what I'm simply going to do is just go ahead and distribute this negative. All right, so by distributing this negative, I'm not gonna write the plus sign, but you could really just say, instead of subtracting seven, you're adding a negative seven. All right, but distributing this, what that does is that gets rid of our parentheses. So therefore, I'm gonna obtain a, two, obtain a two x cubed minus four x squared minus five x plus seven. Now you could write a plus negative seven x or just rewrite this as a seven x cubed um, plus two x and plus one. Make sure you distribute that negative to each and every term. Now from here, we could go ahead and just find our like terms or we could actually rearrange them. And remember, for terms to be like terms, they have to have the same base as power. So all the x cubes, all the x squareds, and all the x's are going to be like terms. So what I'm gonna do for this example is I'm just gonna rearrange them. I'm gonna rewrite two x cubed minus seven x cubed and then minus four x squared. There's no other x squareds. So minus five x plus two x um, plus seven and then plus one. So you can see how now it's a little bit easier to go ahead and combine like terms. And when you have your like terms, you know, the x cubes, all you're gonna do is combine the coefficients. So two minus seven x is going to be a negative five x cubed. Here I have a negative four x squared. This is going to be a negative three x, and this would be a positive eight. So that's one way that you could go out and do it. But you can see that was quite a bit of work, right? And maybe you like the horizontal method, but maybe you wanna do something a little bit easier. So if you kind of feel comfortable with what I did, um, there's another way we could go about this. We could just take two x cubed minus four x squared minus five x plus seven. And then let's go ahead and group that the seven x cubed minus two x minus one. Now, if you don't wanna rewrite it as an addition problem or to distribute, you can just do this out loud. You just have to kind of be careful making sure that you are combining your like terms. So I could say two x cubed minus seven x cubed. Well, that's gonna be a negative five x cubed. Negative four x squared, I cannot subtract that from anything in here. So I'm just gonna rewrite that as a negative four x squared. Then I have a negative five x minus a negative two x. So again, you just have to remember when you minus a negative, that's really going to be a positive two. So therefore that's a negative three x. And then seven minus a negative one, that's going to be a plus, really it's the same plus one, which is going to be eight. So you can see that was a lot faster, a lot easier. But again, you have to make sure that you are following your terms together um, and also just being very careful with your negatives and so forth. And then also a lot of times horizontally, you know, if you, some people really like the horizontal method, it's just easier to kind of see everything, but um, some people really get confused with the horizontal method. So let's go and take a look at the vertical method. Now the vertical method can work kind of two ways. You could have this F minus G of X and you could just rewrite them as exactly as the vertical method states, which just writes one below the other. So if I have two X cubed minus four X squared minus five X plus seven, and then you're just gonna subtract that from the second term. Now, what I like about using the vertical method is again, we could, um, um, when we're using the vertical method, we can align our like terms. So I'm gonna use a negative seven X cubed. This is going to be a minus two X and then minus one. Now, if we don't have anything to subtract from four X, I didn't add a number here, but for this vertical method, sometimes it's nice just to put a, a zero X cubed there. 
okay? And therefore, or it's squared, zero x squared. And therefore, that's just gonna act as a place value. Now, again, you can see that I entered in these parentheses. And the reason why I entered the parentheses is because we're subtracting this whole expression. So when I subtract this way, I'm gonna do 2x cubed, I'm always gonna refer back to this negative, or the subtraction. 2x cubed minus 7x cubed is a negative 5x cubed. Negative 4x squared minus 0x squared, it's just a negative 4x squared negative 5x minus a negative 2. That's again, going to turn that to a positive. That's a negative 3x. And therefore, that will be an 8. So the nice thing about the vertical method is you kind of keep everything aligned. And it was pretty simple, um, kind of going to like this, um, kind of going to this method. Um, but then again, what happened was we, um, again, we still had to remember this minus the negative. And again, that can be tricky. So the last method, which is my absolute favorite, is just to rewrite this as addition to distribute the negative, kind of like what I did in the horizontal method, but to do it in the vertical method. So if I distribute this negative, um, therefore I'm gonna turn the problem into an addition problem. So again, let's just rewrite this. So 2x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x plus 7. Now I'm going to add this, and therefore what that means is I'm gonna distribute this negative to every single term. So therefore it's a negative seven x cubed. You could write this as a minus zero x squared. It doesn't really matter. You don't really need it in there. Um, that's gonna be positive two x, and therefore it's a positive one. So when you distribute the negative, right, you really are turning it to an addition problem. It wasn't really as apparent here, because why would we write plus a negative? But in this problem, you can see now that I am doing this positive, now I'm just gonna add vertically. And I think this is just the easiest way, it's the less, least amount of mess, everything is organized, and you can just add everything vertically. So therefore, this becomes a negative five x cubed. Um, that's just going to be any, anything zero, if it's plus or negative, doesn't matter. Zero x squared, that's gonna be minus three x plus eight. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, those are the four methods that you can use to subtract um, two functions. I want to kind of know from you, is any one of these methods one of your favorite? Or maybe one way that you have um, only been taught and maybe not another method that have you have been um, taught before. So let me know in the comments down below and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Cheers.